we are here and that's what the bible says in joel chapter 2 verse 23 and it says this joel 2 23 and the bible says that this is this is joel inspired by the holy spirit saying this be glad then i love it be glad then you children of zion and the bible says right there and rejoice in the lord your god for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month the bible 20 this verse 24 says the threshing floods shall be full of weed and the baths shall overflow with new wine and oil i want to repeat verse 23 be glad say with me be glad and it says this, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. So I believe today is a day of rejoice, amen. It's a joy when you can smile, when you can say, God, I love you so much. And we can say, thank you, Jesus. Let's thank you, the Lord, right now. Say, thank you, Jesus, because I can have peace in you. Yes, I can be in the middle of the storm. I can be in the middle of something of darkness. But I know that you light shines, God, that you light shines. So today, Lord, darkness is changed by light. Today, Father, my sadness is changed by joy. Because I am free, and I am free indeed, because the blood of Jesus Christ free me from my sins because now holy spirit dwells in me and now i can rejoice father and i can sing to you this morning and i can glorify you with all my heart because you want all my heart lord so father today i'm gonna release all my burdens so then i want to release everything that i've been carrying my sickness and i'm gonna change it by the joy of the lord I'm going to change every, all my pain and all my, all my feelings Lord, that are not coming from you, that are coming from the strength of the darkness. But I'm changing it right now by the glory of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. So, Father, I release everything. I let it go. Come on, just let it go. Whatever is, what is holding your heart back. Because today is a day for rejoice. father came to jesus and said my son is dead my daughter is dead and jesus said no she's not dead she's living jesus has an answer for everything resurrection power every time so today rejoice rejoice because the letter rain is about to come rejoice because the glory of god is about to release a supernatural revival and we are part of that revival and our families and our generation are part of a great 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 and awesome harvest because i believe this nation will experience the greatest revival that i ever seen in my entire history and I declare, God, that we as this ministry, we are this church, we are part of this movement of your spirit. So, Father, engage our hearts. Engage our spirit this morning so we can open our lips, so we can rejoice. Come on, you can say, Lord, I will rejoice in you. I will rejoice in your worship. I will rejoice in what you do, Lord. A small or big, medium, but it doesn't matter. What it matters is that your Holy Spirit is here. It matters that I'm your daughter and your son. And I'm a free, I'm free of the chain. I'm free of, 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 of beatiness. Hey, I am free of darkness. Hey, because I am free in Jesus. Come on, declare that you're free this morning. Declare that you are free to dance. Declare that you are free to rejoice. Declare that you are free to glorify the name of all, all names. The name of Jesus Christ our Lord. How's your, I don't know how's your life lately. I don't know how's your life uh, last week. I don't know how's everything at work, everything in a marriage. Something that I know is that Jesus is the answer. That Jesus is the answer. That Jesus is the exit. And he had, he's not just a, a God sitting on the throne and we are here on earth. He's, he left his Holy Spirit to encourage us, to live our spirits, to say, I'm with you. When Jesus said, I'm with you, that's a promise that today brings us rejoice so let's rejoice together let's rejoice and glorify the name of jesus let's rejoice and glorify the lord with all our hearts 
Come on, up your lips. Up your lips and glorify Jesus right now. Up your lips. Do not let the darkness to keep you quiet. Do not let the problem keep you thinking in the same problem all over and over again. It's time to see the light. It's time to put your eyes in Jesus this morning. Come on, church. Come on, just put your eyes in Jesus right now. And you can see him. You can see him sitting on the throne. You can see him interceding for you in your life. He can see with a smile saying, my daughter, my son, keep walking and keep believing because I'm with you. I'm with you. I call you since the woman, since you were formed and the woman, your mom, and I call you there to this moment, to this hour, to this season. So let's be like Joel. Lord, I will glorify. I will glorify your name and I will rejoice in the house of the Lord Almighty.
And Father, we are here not just to fulfill another appointment in the church, but we are here to establish your kingdom, to move your glory, Lord, and to pray and to worship you because we know when that happens, heavens are opening on our favor. Hey, so we declare, Lord, it's a house of God, and we declare this a Bethel, and we declare that we're preparing our hearts for revival. We're praying and preparing our hearts for the supernatural moment of your glory, and we want to be ready. We want to be ready, want to be ready, want to be ready. Come on, you can say with me, Lord, I want to be ready. I'm, I'm growing my spirit. I'm increasing my spirit because through me, many people will be healed. Come on, declare it with me. Through me, many people will be healed. Choir, you can say, through my lips and my worship, people will be delivered. Hey, will be healed.
to prepare for our movement of glory because it's not about fame it's not about money it's not about cars houses vacations it's about establishing your kingdom in the middle of the hearts of you people and finally we are here to say like Elijah, like Isaiah I'm here I'm here Lord yes we're not perfect we still many issues in our life that need to be fixed but by the glory of the Holy Spirit we can say here we are here we are here we are in this ministry can we move your glory in the nation here we are here we are use us prepare us coach us teach us show us the way we want to be ready for the for the moment that, that is going to about to be that is going to about to destroy the Goliath that is need has this nation on the defeat but no in Jesus' mighty name, we're going to be ready for that day. We're going to be ready to, to go to the city, to the nations. We're going to be ready with the word. We're going to be ready with the anointing. We're going to be ready with knowledge. Hey, we want to be ready for that day, Lord. We are not called to be a local church. We are not, we are not called to be a neighborhood church. We are called to touch the whole nation. Hey, and we believe. We believe it. You believe with me. You can say, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe in the vision of this church. I believe in the vision in this ministry. Revival for the nation. We're going to be thousands and thousands that even our eye cannot see and count. And we believe it, God. We believe it because together we're going to glorify the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Nations will come. Nations will come to this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you, Lord, because revival is what I see. The atmosphere is changing right now. In these last days, the, last, the end times, God is seeking a church that is ready to be the church of the book of Acts. So my word for you people, my, my word for you church, and be, be encouraged, be courage. Do not fail, do not faint, do not give up, keep working, keep believing with expectation. The day will come, the vision will be fulfilled, and we have to be faithful, faithful, faithful every day. So Lord, we want to thank you for this moment of glory. We open our hearts for what you're going to say today. We open our ears to hear your voice. We open our minds and spirit and everything that we are to hear your voice this morning. We pray for those that couldn't come today. And we pray for those that don't want to listen to your gospel. That you can open your hearts and you can open your ears, God, one day. Not too far to hear the voice of Jesus. As one day we did. Father, release your Holy Spirit. Brighter, brighter in our ears. Come on, this is our prayer finally. Prayer. You can say, Lord, release your spirit in my heart in a, in a greater level.
I was I was watching you there you go. Don't lay don't lay don't lay this quiet. I was watching a video, actually a concert uh, of elevation worship. And 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 I was in, you know, with my kids we were like, look, this is Christian. And look, and there's a guy uh, that he has a hat. Is look, this is Carlo. This is Carlo singing here. And look, this is Daniel. And this is some of them. And because we believe, we believe God is going to use us to touch the nation. And everybody wants a great beginning, but we understand something that everything begins with small. And if we are faithful as we have been during this year and a half practicing English and preparing everything, I believe God is going to use us supernaturally around the nation. Amen. But we have to be ready. Tell with me, I have to be ready. Yes, because when you are faithful in the little, God will put you where? And in much. So I love it. I, I, I understand God is going gonna, gonna to move the church. And, and we have visions and not just words, prophecy words, but we have visions. And we have uh, somebody else from different places have prophesied about upon us. And he says many nations will come. And, and, and yes, this may, there's a few things that we need to fix. But God is moving. God is working our hearts. And, and I believe the, the, the key of this is faithfulness. The key of revival is be faithful with expectation. Amen. Amen. So you, every time you come to church, every time you come to practice, every time you come to the shop, which your Wednesdays, come with expectation that God is moving. Amen. God is moving. Sometimes the enemy says, Put, look your eyes, open your eyes. Nothing is happening. But the Bible says that we don't walk by, uh, by what we see. We walk by faith. Amen. And we walk by faith. If faith is something that we don't have it, but we believe it. Because Jesus already said. So yes, we believe in a great, a great uh, actually, according to, to the vision, a great, awesome temple that I don't even know we're going to find one like that one. But God is good. But we have to be faithful there. We have to be faithful in the little because one day we're going to say, I remember those days. I remember those days when we were 12. And now we're thousands. Worshiping and glorify Jesus. Amen. So we want to thank you, Lord, for, for, for what you're doing every day in our hearts. Lord, you are faithful. It's not us doing it. We don't deserve it. But he was pleased if you chose us for such, like that song, for such time as this. And Father, we want to be faithful wherever we are right now. We, we, if we are in the sound, we are in our church area, we are in the worship team, whatever area it is, we're going to be faithful there because we know one day you will re give us a great reward in the middle of the body of Christ. We want to thank you for those brothers and sisters that right now are worshiping with us around the globe, worldwide, from Australia to this place. People worshiping today the name of Jesus, and we join them. And we join the angels, and we join the, the cherubims and seraphims. Lord, glorify Jesus today. So, Father, we're preparing our hearts for the world. We're preparing our hearts for what you're doing, for what you're doing in this generation. I pray for the young generation that is here right now. We, I bless you guys. I bless you with all my heart because I want to declare that you guys are going to go higher and higher and higher. You have a long way to go, and I believe God is going to take you there in an awesome and marvelous way. But you have to keep faithful, keep believing, and keep be teachable and humble so you can receive more of God. So, Father, thank you for this young generation that is here. Thank you for this, this beautiful ministry that you allow us to pastor. Father, we pray for more of you, more of your spirit, and less of us. Speak every day to our hearts. Do not let us go down. Do not let us extinguish the, the fire in us. But in the other, but other, but, but the opposite God increase our fire increase our passion for you Lord increase our prayer moment our worship time increase our our character as Christ Jesus today we want to thank you Lord for what you're doing for 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 what you what are you going to do because even though we don't see it we believe it and we believe it with all our hearts together so we want to give you glory praise and honor Jesus and your name we pray we all say amen Amen. If you believe with us, let's give a mighty applause to the Lord right now. Amen. Okay, 
So I just want to I just want to open the altar right now to collect our tithes and offerings. And you know what? I want to share something with you really quick, so I can I, I can walk into the the, the 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 word of the Lord right now. Um, how many of you know that God is our provider? Amen. Every day, God is our provider. Every day, every day, I seen it with my own with with my like like the kids. I spy with my little eye. <laughs> Well, it's probably with my little eye that Jesus is good. Amen. 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 So God is good. God is amazing. And, and he's faithful every day. So let's open. We're going to open the altar just a few minutes just to bring tithes and offerings. And just to give thanks to the, and those that are online. You can do the donation right there. See the everybodychurch.com. And Father, we want to thank you for the provision this week. Bible says, so let each one gives as he purpose in his heart, not grandly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So Father, we are, we want to thank you for what you're doing in our economy, in our financials. We know that you're going to help us to pay everything that we need. The Bible says that you will supply everything that we need according to your riches and glory. So Father, I pray for better financials. I pray for healing. I pray for multiplication. I pray for increasing. I pray for new jobs, new opportunities. Hey, blessing in every area. We honor you with our tithes and offerings. And we give you praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. We all say amen and amen. Amen. Something amazing happened. Uh, how many of you know that mechanics are expensive? A lot of money in mechanics. I don't like to go to the mechanics. It's too much money. This week I take my car to the mechanic because uh, you need to get fixed. And 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 it says, okay, you your car has guarantee. And I was like, okay, whew, praise God. And, and, and I just say, okay, let's do the job, uh, let's fix it. They fix it, and they call me that day, the day that car was ready. And told me, no, you know what? The guarantee didn't cover, expire. And I was like, oh no, don't tell me that. And he said, yes. I said, so how much? Uh, how much is the cost? Fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I was like, what? Fifteen hundred dollars? You're gonna be kidding me. So I was like, you know, checking the prices, and and I was like, oh, well, I don't have fifteen hundred dollars, but God is good, amen. So we said, God, you're you our provider. I need, and the guy said, well, do you want me to? I take the part, you know, I just remove the part and just get the car. He said, well, I need the car. I, I transport my family. I use it for the church. I, I mean, I, I need my car. I just, and I said, well, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot stay with a car. So, um, so we spent $1,500 right there, just like, like that. They're gone. They're not coming back. Uh, uh, but, uh, and I was, I was really... Uh, touch and uh, in, in some way ain't like mad and anger and I was like, why this happened? Why uh, fifteen hundred dollars that uh, that I don't have and, and I need to put in my car? But but God has given us the peace to say, you know what? It's just a car, and it's just money. It's not it's not that uh, it's, it's no. I mean, we are healthy, amen. And I believe that's the most important part. And and I said, God, I want to let it. I, I want to let it go because I was really, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you have put fifteen hundred dollars in a car for fix. That hurts a lot. But I had to let it go. Just let it go. I said, God, I'll trust you with all my heart. And actually, this week I was sharing my testimony about the transmission with somebody. And, and now the car fifteen hundred because the transmission was twenty five hundred, and now fifteen hundred. But you know what? God is good. Amen. And I'm here glorifying, I'm here jumping and say, you know what? Jesus is good and money is not everything in our lives. Amen. Money comes, money goes. Job, job, job said he gives and he takes away. Amen. 
So he gave us right now $1,500. We pay, the car is fixed. The next day, he's going to give us more. Amen? And, now, and God says, be faithful. Be faithful. But those burdens, the enemy wants to put those burdens in you. Eh? And not, it's not uh, today's money, maybe tomorrow's sickness. I don't know what it could be happening in our lives. And the enemy is always trying to put something on it so we cannot worship, so we cannot glorify, so he can, he, he can stop our prayer time. But right there, we have to say, you know what, God, I want to let it go. So I don't know what you've been carrying lately. That's what I start. I mean, you see how it started. It's like, God, but I declare that I'm a, a vassal, a vassal of your glory to touch your, your people and your, your children, Lord. And I pray that this word can transform our hearts every day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. And amen. So Mark chapter 10, we're going to go to verse 42. And it says this, but Jesus called them. He called what? The disciples. And Jesus called them and to himself and said to them, You know, this is Jesus speaking right there. You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles, Lord, it over them. And the great ones exercise authority over them. And it says, Yet it shall not be so among, among you. But whoever, and I want, you, I, want to, I want you to read this with me, please. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. I want to repeat that part again. But whoever desires to become great, say with me, great. It says, great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you deserves to be first shall be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And amen. And I want to repeat the, the verse 43. And it says, Yet it shall not be among you. This is Jesus speaking right there. 43, please. But whoever desires to become greater, great among you shall be your servant. Amen and amen. Say with me, amen. You know, I remember when I came to North America, I was 16 years ago. That was a long time ago. And, and, and I remember I was, in, I was taking English. And, and I remember I like, uh, I like Coke, so I just bought a Coke and... and and then I was in my, in my desk taking my classes, and I was the only, uh, well, another person, but I was, it was only two Latinos in that class. Everybody else is from different parts of the, of, the, of, the, of the world. And I remember I was drinking my Coke right there, you know, enjoying like, <sighs> you know, you feel the, the heat, right? oh, oh, man, I need one right now. And, 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 and I was just drinking it. <sighs> In one moment, my coke just flipped, and it just, I, be, I did a big mess in the floor. I was like, a, oops, and just, just popped everywhere in the floor. But it was funny that that day, uh, there were some Asian ladies. I don't want to see the nation, but it was some Asian ladies, and they just saw what happened, and they're like, oh, like, like, oh. And they went really quickly to the bathroom and just got a bunch of paper towels. And they started cleaning my mess. I was like this. Yeah, and I was, I was saying with my English, no, 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 please, no, okay, okay. Okay, you know, I didn't speak English very well at that moment. But they cleaned all my mess. And I was, you know what, that was 16 years ago. And I still remember how it happened. I still remember the attitude and the heart of those ladies that day. They, didn't, they don't even know me. I never shared a word with them. But when they saw that happen, they didn't hesitate and just go and get something to clean and just clean the mess of that stranger. And you know what? That experience, it touched my heart for 16 years. And now Jesus is speaking right here in the war because in this part of the Bible, uh, Jake, James and John came to Jesus and said, Teacher, I want you, teacher, look what, they, look what they said. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And Jesus said, Okay, guys, well, what, you, what do you want? You know, tell me, what do you want? And they said, well, Lord, grant us that we might see one on your right hand and the other one on your left in your glory. Oh, 
That was a big petition. And James and John, they were asking the Lord, Lord, we want to be at your right and we want to be at your left in your kingdom. That was a great and actually ambitious petition. And Jesus said, whoa, 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 whoa. One moment, guys. Let me tell you something. The world, this is how the world works. This one reigns about this and this, this, this. But no among you. And I like why he says this. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be what? Can you, verse 43, are you there? You lost the, you lost the verse. 443 says, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And 44 says, and whoever you desire to be first, say with me first, shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to be served. So Jesus is speaking about this, about, you know guys, you, I cannot give you that place. I cannot give you that position, but I can give you the key. How can you become important in the heaven? You have to be a slave. Say with me, a slave. Yes, you have to serve others. The same thing that those ladies did that day with a stranger. The same thing God is asking us to do. The same thing God is asking the church to serve others. Say with me, serve others. Because the world teaches different. The world teaches that when we are big, when we are mature, when we are a, 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 a mature Christians, people need to serve me. People need to do what I want to do. People need to do what I ask you to do. But God is saying something. It's no among you guys. You have to serve others. You have to be humble enough to be a slave of others, same as Jesus did. Say we meet Jesus did. Because the church needs to lead by example. The church needs to lead by what we do in every day. Our actions tell more than our words. How many of you know that? Many people say, I'm Christian, I do this, I do this. But they're not humble enough. And they are, be, they are actually walking away from this commandment of their Lord. Whoever wants to be first is going to be what? The servant of all. And God is asking us today to take the attitude of the humbleness. To believe that we are called to serve others. Look what it says, Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. The Bible says this, the Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul. It says this, for though I am free, I, sorry, I am free from all men. I have made myself a servant to all that I might be win the more. Look, God, the Apostle Paul is saying, look, guys, I'm an apostle. Jesus redeemed me. I have an encounter with Jesus and the way to Damascus. But right now, I'm going to become a servant of everybody here. In order to reach them for what? For Jesus. He said in the same verse, to the Jewish, I become Jewish. To those who are under the law, I become under the law. To those without law, I become without law. To the weak and become as weak in order to reach them for Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So we have to understand something. When revival breaks out, when revival breaks out, the, the worship team, it cannot walk like this. Like, oh, I, I, no, I cannot do this. Like, no, we have to be humble and serve others. Say so we may serve others. Come on, serve me, we serve others as Jesus did. And I, I, did, I, I believe the great example is when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. You know, everybody walk, you know, I don't know if you understand this, but there were no socks, there were no powder, there were no water daily to wash every day. So I cannot imagine what those feet of the disciples smell or how they look. I mean, if, I mean, if you say, can you wash my feet? You're going to say, oh, nasty. And I took a shower this morning. Huh? But what happened if, you know, at the end of the day, you see the sandals of those feet, black, dirty, dust everywhere. And it says, wash my feet. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, let me wash your feet. Let me wash your feet. Because Jesus came to here to what? To serve others. So we may serve others. And God is waiting for us by the Holy Spirit to serve everybody around us. Not to be served. We don't have to wait for people to serve us. But we are here to serve others. Say we may serve others. Matthew 23, 11, Jesus said this. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. I want to repeat that verse. Can you read it with me? But he who is greatest among you be your one 
your servant. Be your servant. You know, that's the first thing that God touched my heart. I, 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 was, I was a baby in, in my faith. And the first, that I, the, the first thing that I learned is to serve others. I was helping pastor with the vacuum. I was carrying a bunch of stuff. We cleaned the bathroom. We, we did as much as we could because we understood something by the Holy Spirit. If we want to be big in the kingdom of God, we need to serve others. Amen? That's what Jesus said. If you want to be great, if you want to be the first, you have to be a slave of all. You have to serve others. And that's what, something that we need to understand. You know, when God called me, g- gave me the opportunity to be a team leader at work, you know what I did? I served people. Not because I'm the team leader or because I'm the supervisor. I'm going to be sitting at my desk and, you know, you know, scratching my belly and watching everybody. You know, I was the team leader, and I was using my broom. I was taking the garbage outside. I was saying, what do you need? You know, I was, ser- I was the leader, but the leader is not the one that is waiting for everybody to serve, but it is the one to serve everybody. Because that's what Jesus is saying. So God, church, we need, we need, to, ask, we need to understand something. When revival breaks out, we are going to be served every day in our lives. We have to serve others. People will come sick. People will come with problems. People will come without love. And we have to love them all. We cannot just despise them. We cannot just say, oh, well, I don't, don't think that people deserve this. Oh, I, you know, I'm not going to talk to that people. We need to serve everybody. Jesus is saying something. Somebody wants to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Then become what? A servant. A slave of all. God is asking us not to do the basic, but even to do, not to be, something that I don't like. As my, how, how you say mediocre? In English. Mediocre. You know, that's things that I don't like. You know, even at work, I, 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 I cannot say I hate, but I like, it's like when people are mediocre. You know, when people are barely, barely do the minimum. I don't like that. Why? Because Jesus is asking us to go what? Even higher, even further, right? Look what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 41. It says that whoever compels you to go one mile... Go half. Go three quarters. What did he say? I want to repeat it again because I, I think you are lost. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him two. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean two? Yes, God is asking us to go even further. God is asking us to be even higher, to serve even more. Actually, he says if somebody's taking your, your, your mantle or whatever, you have just give the jacket. Give, the, give, you know, give everything that they need. God is asking us to go even, even beyond the, our intelligence. Our, uh, re, how is it, reasoning? Re, reasoning? Re, reasoning? Our reasoning. Even beyond that. What? I have to serve others? Yes, you have to. I remember when we were in an I-40 Dandas, I remember one day God called us to wash their feet. Everybody. I was like, whoa. I, I have read that in the Bible. Now I have to wash their feet? And Jesus said, yes, you have to wash. I remember that day. Remember that? It was a Wednesday evening, right? No, it was a Wednesday? Yes, it was a Wednesday. Oh, we were in fasting time. Yes, God and, and my wife said, let's buy the, the, the jars and let's buy the towels. And I was like, oh, no, really? Yes, because God is asking us to serve others. God is asking us not just to be a role model, somebody that people can look at it and there's like, well, I can, can I talk to you? You know, when, I, when we go to Colombia and talk to Pastor Ricardo, you know, he's, he's a servant. He's, a, he's a, a humble. You can, you can see him in the church with 40,000 people, but he's a humble man. You can see him. He's a servant of the Lord. He served. And we need to understand something. If you want to be big in the kingdom of God, if you want to be big in a kingdom of, uh, in, a, in a church of revival, we need to serve others. Say we me serve others. You know, that's what I'm not afraid to do. You know, is, you know uh, we, we, we check the church before we leave. And sometimes uh, we have to, ch- you know, wash the cups and close the curtains. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to do that. I, I know how the kingdom of God works. And I'm afraid to serve others. I'm not afraid to get, you know, a coffee for somebody. I'm not afraid to, to talk to somebody, to share the gospel of somebody. Even not just in the church, but outside the church. You know, open the door for somebody that you don't know. You know, like those action ladies clean that mess. Why? I didn't do that. Well, you know what? Those, that, those ladies touched my heart for six. I still remember 16 years later. I believe we need to serve people, church. 
We need to show the character of Christ everywhere we go. In the bus, in the library, at work. You know, when you help somebody, when you go the extra mile, people are going to say something is different, these people. Something happened, something, you know, this person, he has never done that before. You know, I remember when I was working, in the, you know, we had different areas. And I remember uh, something that I had to fix and I had to uh, teach them is because everybody was cleaning their own area. I clean my area and I go home. And I say, whoa, 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 that's not how it works. You know, we are a team. And if you finish first, you're going to clean the whole area. But I, but I don't work in that area. I don't care. You're going to go and clean over there. Because this is about serving others. And that's what happened. You know, they, they, were, they were finishing here. They might clean my spot and everybody, who cares? And now, you know what? I teach them. You know what? You finish here. You're going to go clean over there. You're going to go clean over there. And people will see that and we're going to become a team. And that's what we need in the church. That's something that I've been teaching and I need, to, I need you to understand here in the church is that we are called to serve. Why? Because Jesus said it. Say with me, servants for Jesus. And I want to finish with the verse, which is Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 8. And it says this, let this mind be in you. Say with me, in me. It, look what it says right there. Let, what? This mind be be in you. So it's, it's, the, it's a state of mind. It says, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself what? Of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. Say we mean servant. And coming in the likeness of a man, and be found in appearance as a man, and he humbled himself and become obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Listen, Jesus is king, is God, amen? But the Bible says he become a servant. Can you imagine an awesome God coming from heaven and washing the feet of a fisher's man? Washing the feet of people. You know what? That's just a great example of a great leader. And we need to follow that example. And we need to understand that God is calling us not to be in a high rank only. You know, that's, you know, that's something that I've been I, uh, talking to Daniel is that I believe in the anointing that he has. I believe in the power and, 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 and the anointing for, you know, play the instrument. But he needs to be, be humble enough to serve others. Just because he plays the piano and it's like, oh, no, nobody can touch me. You know, something, something happened in the church for years is that people say, don't touch the anointed one. What? That's why I like when I be here and, the, and, you know, when I finish my service, I like to be here and say hi and greet as many people as I can. Because I'm here to serve. And we all are here to serve. That's what he says, this, and let the, this, this mind be in you, which was, oh, which was also in Christ Jesus. So Jesus has a, a mind of service. We need to have a mind of service. Yes, we are no, we don't have to wave to be pleased. We have to please the Lord. How we please the Lord? When we serve the others. So God is asking us today, in the word of the Lord, to be a servant of Jesus. Doesn't matter, I let me say, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking just about here in the ministry, I'm talking about outside. You know, if I speak to your friends, if I speak to your co-workers, you should, you should be the best servant of all right there. You know, if I go to one of your, your jobs and ask her how, how Diana is, and people say, wow, she's awesome. I don't know what happened. She served everybody. I mean, the spirit that just, wow, that's awesome. Because we don't have, we are not called to be just the light of the world here in the church. We are the light of the world where? Outside, in the world. How we do that? When we serve others. So do not hesitate. Do not say hesitate to serve others. Do not, he do not hesitate to help somebody. Do not hesitate to open the door for somebody. Do not hesitate to clean for somebody. To what can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I do? People will say, wow, there's something amazing in this person. Why? Because Jesus said it. We have to be what? Humble. Say with me, humble. Come on, someone say with me, hum humble. I share with I share with this I share with this with you on Friday, because I met a, I met a guy in the mechanic place on Friday, and the guy told me, oh well you are not too young to be a pastor, and I said well thank you for the advice, 
And he said, yeah, as long as you keep the two qualities. And I was like, what is qualities? He's, he was, uh, he was, he's probably 58, almost 60, maybe no, 60 something. He's almost 70. And he said, as long as you keep the two qualities. And I was like, which one, which are the two qualities for a great pastor? And he said, well, the great qualities for a leader is be teachable and be humble. A guy that I never seen before in my life. At the first time I saw him. And he told me that. He told me on Friday, the best, the best qualities of a leader. And he was talking about a pastor. And I believe for every leader, is those, and I believe those kids are, are fundamental in our hearts. Be teachable and be humble enough. So Jesus right now, Danny, can you come please? So basically Jesus is asking us today to be humble enough to serve others. Say we may serve others. So yes, right now, God is asking us to put your eye print. You know what the eye print is? You know, put the eye print. You know, the one they use to cooking. Right? Eye print? It's called? Apron. Apron. So pretty close. Something print. They eat, what else called? Apron. Apron. Yeah, put your apron and be ready to serve. Be ready to have the mind of Christ and to serve. Listen, I want you to understand something. Be ready to serve people that you haven't seen ever in your life. Because we are learning that we need to serve those that we know. But God is asking us something. We need to serve those that we haven't seen. And listen, many people will come. Amen? So, for example, those that are in the door. I know sometimes that Diana's on the door. Sometimes I know the Uchers are on the door. And we cannot, you know, people will come and we cannot say, Hey, how you doing, brother? A big hug. And when you don't know one, it's like, oh, no, you know what? Hi. No, we have to serve. And God is asking us to serve everybody. Say with me, everybody. Not just those that we know. That's what I like when they when say, okay, let's, let's say hi to those that we haven't seen during the week. Because God is asking us to serve. I want to I wanna finish and I want to repeat those verses again. Can you, can you put uh, that again? Matt, can you stand up, please? Matthew 10, 43 and 44. We're going to pray right now. How many, how many of you want to be great in heaven? Oh, just, just a few. Okay. How many wants to be big in the heavens? Be a servant of all. That's the key of victory. You want to be a great leader? How many leaders are here? Just, just, okay. I'm going to repeat that because. How many leaders are here? Yes. The key of leadership is serve others. Serve others, be teachable, and be humble. I want to repeat those verses again so we can pray. He says, Jesus said this, Yet it shall not be one, so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be a slave you need to learn something. And I believe God has given us the opportunity to be to serve others. So I'm going to encourage you right now to do something. Serve this week. I'm going to encourage you to serve somebody that you don't know. But what they're going to say? Don't worry. Jesus will work. You know, you know, you, you have a co-worker, you have a friend that you haven't done anything for them this week. Take a coffee with you. You know, take a coffee with you. Of course, well, men with men and women with women, you know, please. I don't want any problems right there. But yeah, take a coffee this week and says, you know what? God put me in my heart to bring you a coffee. And you know what? You want sugar? You want cream? How many sugar? How many cream? Let me do it for you. I'm served. I'm serving others. It's easy to serve my friends because I know them. But God is asking us to serve those that we don't know. So this week, I'm going to encourage you to serve somebody that you don't know, that you haven't seen.
maybe in your life, or maybe you don't talk much. Serve. Find a way to be a servant. Find a way to, you know what, open the door and, and maybe help with something. Let me help you with that homework. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with that. If people will say, why? I don't know. Just uh, Pastor told me to. No, no, no. No, just because I, I believe God spoke to my heart on the weekend. And he's asking me to serve people that I, I would love to share Christ. And when that people say, whoa, thank you for the coffee. How come? You can say, because Jesus loved me. And I'm here because I'm a proof that he's alive. So if you want to be first in the kingdom of God, be a servant. That's what God is asking us to do. I want to finish one more time with this verse. Matthew 23, 11, please. So we, I need you to, to go deeper in this. I know it's hard, but we need to serve others. You know, I, li I like to be in the door and say hi to everybody. I like to serve that way. The people will look past on the door like, mm, he's waiting for me. So I don't, okay. Because I like to be there. I like to, I like to greet people. Hey, good morning. How are you today? But when people see the pastor, like, whoa, pastor in the entrance. He saw me the time I came. So that's why, okay. You know, I'm going to move out of the door then. But I want you to have the mind of Christ. Say with me, serve. Tell the one beside you, we need to serve others. Tell the one beside you, do not wait. Serve. You know, when I go to a restaurant, something that I don't like is when I have to wait for the waitress. And just wait and wait and wait and wait. And like, hey, hey hello, somebody here? And, they are, and after that, they want tip. We need to be servants. But diligence, say we mean diligence. A diligent servant for the Lord everywhere. Say we mean everywhere. No, in I'm not talking about church. Church, we have to be faithful. I know that. But I'm talking about outside. Serve somebody. Serve somebody this week. Take a coffee with you. Buy a bag of donuts or whatever. Serve others. Hey, guys, look. I bring some timbis. Let me serve you. Let me serve you. Coffee, what do you need? You know, if you work in an area, you work in any job, serve everybody. Somebody that you don't know, people will, will appreciate that, and they will open their hearts to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? So let's pray right now. Let's let the Holy Spirit lead us in this. And Father, we are, we are so thankful to hear your voice today. And Father, we are here saying, Lord, forgive us at the first step of the blessing, I believe. And, and Father, we pray for forgiveness. Forgive us because I had the opportunity to serve others and I chose not to. Because my ego, because that, maybe the position that I am, I have, maybe because my pride, but Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray right now that Holy Spirit can come in my heart. And I pray right now that, that the gift of being humble can touch my heart right now. To serve others. To be teachable. And to be humble enough, Father, to have the mind of Christ. Yes, God, you are God and you didn't care about that. You came and become a man, a man and become a servant. Father, I want to follow that steps. I want to be great in heaven. I want to be the first one in line right there. But I know I have to serve people. I need to serve others. And I need to be a slave of all, like the Apostle Peter. Not just to please people, because that's not the case. But just to share the, God, the love of Jesus Christ. Just to share the good news. Just to share a testimony that Jesus Christ is in my heart. So, Father, forgive me if I haven't served people around me. Forgive me if I haven't done anything in the service. But I want to serve. I want to serve. I want to serve every day. Allow me to be the light of the world. Allow me to be a light at work, at school, in the bus, in the library, wherever I go. Allow me, Lord, to serve others and to show the 
love of Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, I can do this and this and that, but if I don't have love, I, have no, I don't have nothing. I am nothing. So, Father, we are not acting here on just obedience with a forced obedience, but we want to move in love. We want to move in grace. We want to serve others because we love you, Jesus. Because we want to share that love with everybody. So, Father, we need your revival this morning in the house. We need your revival in the way of service. And, Father, empower everybody here in this church right now to be servants of all. Yes, many people will come, and we are going to be ready with our apron to serve everybody. To serve, to greet those that we don't even know. Maybe those that they don't smell really well, they don't look very well, but Father, we don't care. We want to share your love with them. We want to serve them with passion. Hey, fire in us. Revival in our hearts. We need your revival this morning in service. Service in the house of the Lord. Service in the body of Christ. So people can see that I'm not just saying that I'm Christian, but I'm living like Christ Jesus. Oh, we need revival. Come on, the revival today is in service. So you need to be a servant. If you don't have a heart for service, you can ask for one today. You can ask for a heart today to serve other people. Can say, Holy Spirit, help me to serve others. No waiting for them to repay me. No waiting for them to give me something in exchange. Maybe without interest. Just with the desire of share Jesus. Just with the desire. I love you more.
serve everybody? We want to be a servant of all. You want to be a church, a ministry that is full of people that is ready to serve. You want to be a church that are a people that is ready to serve and give love to others. Not just a church, but wherever we go. We want to be like you, Jesus. So we want to thank you for the instruction today. We want to thank you for the word that you gave us this morning. We pray you can touch our hearts. We pray you can touch our lives. And we pray you can bless us the rest of the day and the rest of the week. We leave this moment and we finish the service. But Father, your glory is coming with us. We bless the rest of the week. We want to give you glory and honor. We declare that we're servants of all. Of all. We're servants of all as slaves for you, Jesus, so we can share your love with many people out there. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. And we all say this and pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. And we say this morning, amen, amen. Give a mighty applause to Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful day. In about uh, 10 minutes, we're going to begin our Spanish service. So, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be a servant.